Thank you very much, uh, Smith and Nephew. Thank you, Charlie. I think that's a great faculty, and uh, I would like to start with the first slide, and this is, I think, the fifth one. <laughs> Probably you can go back to the first slide. Some more. Okay, all right. So, um, I talk about anatomy of the A cell, and I think that uh, the anatomical double bundle structure is very recognized. Meanwhile, we have plenty of, uh, uh, of uh, publications, and uh, you see the peer bundle in blue and the AM bundle in red, and you see the insurgents. On a sagittal MRI, you sometimes really nicely see the AM and peer bundle, and uh, on top you see the two cadaver. Uh, dissections with the AM bundle directly at uh, the um, notch uh, roof and the peer bundle uh, posterior of that. We know that the two bundles uh, act uh, that they rotate during from extension to flexion and on the left hand side you see the two bundles parallel to each other and on the uh, uh, right hand side in flexion you see that the peer bundle insertion on the femoral side subducts the AM bundle and we have a cross crossing of the PL and the AM bundle. So I want to talk uh, about the TB insertion site. Uh, we know that it is uh, very individual in size and shape, and we have plenty of publications, and I think it's very difficult to, to uh, clearly uh, dissect these insertions. So that's why we have different uh, facets of this insertion. Uh, the area is very uh, inhomogeneous, as you can see, wide range. The length of the insertion site is between 9 and 21, width is uh, in, in a smaller range, 9 to 13. Uh, the male have bigger insertions than the female, that, this is significant, and the area between AM and PL is about the same, a little bit uh, for uh, the AM. Um, I think we agree that the anteromedial and posterolateral orientation of the bundles is according to their names. And uh, there are also different publications on that, but I think the anteromedial bundle is more anteromedial on the tibial side and posterolateral, more posterolateral. And uh, we have an, the ACL mid substance, which I think is very uh, interesting. Narrowest diameter is between 7 and 12 millimeters. So when we have a, we never go to 12, when we when we um, reconstruct an ACL, but we are in between 7 and 12, I think it's a good range where we have our crafts. Mid-substance area, male to female, also significantly bigger in male. Uh, length of AM, about 3 centimeters. Length of PL, about 2 centimeters, so 1 centimeter less. And we have an axis uh, of 26 degree from the vertical uh, alignment of the ACL and it's, we know that the ACL is twisted around 90 degree, what we use in patella tendon uh, reconstruction. So arthroscopic tibial orientation, um, I think it's very good to orientate according to the ACL stump. So I don't orientate to the, to the lateral meniscus or something else. I, if the stump is there, I think that's the easiest and best way to orientate, to use a stump. Um, and uh, I try to be in the, with a the single bundle in the anterior part of the insertion site. So in transtibial times we have been more posterior. I think now we come more anterior with the bone tunnel. And on the medial side we of course can use a bony medial tibial spine for orientation and for the peer bundle in the back the lateral um, eminenza intercondylaris and posterior root of the lateral meniscus which comes in just in posterior to the PL insertion. Here it's easier if uh, we still have one bundle. So on the left hand side the PL bundle is intact. We just can put our bone tunnel in front um, for on the tibia side for the AM and on the right hand side the AM bundle is intact and we put the, the PL uh, tunnel just behind. So we can use the soft tissue as uh, uh, for orientation too of course. We have short insertion sites which I think is very important, uh, especially in women. We have smaller, a lot of smaller knees, and we have to. I think we have to take that into consideration when we reconstruct. So this is a very small, and I think 10 millimeter is also a difficult case to reconstruct, because you see on the right hand side the bone tunnel is uh, must be really precise in the middle, and we have very long insertion sites um, where it's of, where it's of course easy to 
to put a bone tunnel in this uh, place. Or you can use two bone tunnels. So we um, developed this insertion site table, which just was published in the KSST journal this month. Um, on the left-hand side, you see the insertion site length, and then the uh, next two rows is uh, matching bone tunnel with ankle, and on the right-hand side, you see that we try to get 100% of the insertion site back. So this might help to reconstruct the individual insertion site. Femal site. Um, it's more constant in shape, but also there's a difference in area. AM and PL bundle, you see, and OTP means over the top position, a lot of studies. The area is also a wide range. Length is between 11 and 19, width uh, 8 to 11, and also male have bigger knees than female significantly. Arthroscopic anatomy, I think it's very important because when we flex the knee, the PL bundle comes uh, forward, as you can see here, and uh, we have to, to, um, to uh, be sure that we understand this anatomy when we flex the knee or when we extend the knee. So this is important before we start reconstructing. Um, here you see the femoral orientation, and you see the yellow, um, in yellow is the scope, and you see in about 90 degree, you have this uh, alignment here of the, the ACL on the femoral side with the over-the-top position right here. Very important, the bony landmarks, and I myself orientate only to this, according to this bony landmarks, um, described by Clancy, Shinu, Fu, and others. And uh, I think the most important uh, ridge for me is a residence ridge, which is just in front, sorry, which is just in front uh, of the insertion, and we have to be behind the, uh, the, this residence with, with our um, bone tunnels, and we have to be always below the highest point here of the, the notch, the over-the-top position, so the posterior exit of the, the intercondylicum. Uh, here you see a nice residence ridge. You see it here, and we have to be behind the residence ridge. I always use X-ray in the OR. This is not a nice X-ray, but I think we, I guess we hear more from Charlie Brown later. And uh, you see what we do with some uh, transtibial drilling. Here's the highest point of the notch. Here's a residence ridge. So this is a new bone tunnel, and here was a far off um, transtibial bone tunnel, much too high. Um, there was discussion about the slope of the femoral insertions between, and this is between, it's very wide range, between zero degree and 41, thank you. I finish in two seconds. And uh, so we, I think it's not so good to use as a general orientation model. But you can, of course, when you flex the knee, you can get both insertions, AM and PL to a horizontal alignment, but who knows in which patient, which ankle. So it's difficult. By mechanics, I probably jump off it. So we, uh, have an, um, each, each fiber of the ACL has a function, so we should, from my point of view, try to reconstruct as much fibers as we can. And uh, the tension and patterns, I think we know about it, I don't want to be too, mu too far off. So in conclusion, sig there are significant variations of the ACL insertion sites, and, the individual, and we should have definitely an individual approach to ACL surgery. Thank you very much. 16 seconds. Can you?